Who knew what when? Email records show when top state government officials knew about the Flint water crisis. October 1st, 2014. Governor Rick Snyder receives a detailed briefing paper from DEQ about boil water advisories in Flint and problems with controlling bacteria in water. October 14th. Valerie Brader sends an email to Michael Godola, Dennis Muchmore, Beth Clement, and Jared Agin raising concerns about Flint water after General Motors announces Flint River water is too corrosive for its manufacturing needs. Brader writes, I see this as an urgent matter to fix, urging Flint be switched back to Detroit water. Godola agrees the water source should be switched back to Detroit, ASAP, before this thing gets too far out of control. Much more forwards Brader's email to Thomas Saxton and Wayne Workman and asks them, can you guys step into this? October 2014. After Brader's October 14th email raising concerns about Flint River water, Richard Baird talks to Brader and Darnell Early. Early says the water problem can be solved and it would be too cost prohibitive to switch back to Detroit water, according to the Flint Water Advisory Task Force. January 2015, Dan Wyatt and Nick Lyon both become aware of a Legionnaire's disease outbreak in Genesee County and its potential link to Flint River water. January 28th, Dick Posthumus hosts a meeting of officials from the Governor's Office, Treasury, City of Flint, and others to discuss Flint water. Among those invited are Clement, Saxton, Harvey Hollins, and much more. January 30th, Brad Werfel sends an email to Dave Murray saying he doesn't want Wyant, quote, to say publicly that the water in Flint is safe until we get the results of some county health department epidemiological trace work back on 42 cases of Legionnaire's disease in Genesee County since last May, end quote. February 1st, Snyder receives a detailed memo about the Flint water situation from Murray in advance of a grant announcement to improve Flint's water system. The memo does not mention Legionnaire's. March 2nd, much more emails Clement and Hollins. I have become increasingly concerned about the situation in Flint and the lack of empathy for the residents. Much more suggests buying bottled water for residents. Saxton, Baird, Agin, Brad Werfel, Sarah Werfel, Wyant, and Workman are looped into email conversation, which morphs into an idea to deliver tap-mounted water filters to Flint. March 6, as part of a written daily briefing to Snyder, Sarah Werfel writes, Community activists are continuing to raise public concerns about the quality of Flint water, and the talk has grown uglier. March 13, Brad Werfel sends an email to Sarah Werfel, Agin, and Hollins detailing the Legionnaire's disease outbreak and says Genesee County Health Director Jim Henry is claiming Flint River water is to blame. Agin later says that he never opened the email. April 29th, Hollins gives Snyder a briefing memo on the city of Flint, which includes a section on Flint water, and concludes Flint cannot afford to switch back to Detroit water. Hollins doesn't tell Snyder about the possible link between Legionnaires and Flint water. He later tells MLive, I assumed others would inform the governor, but looking back now, it is clear that was not the case. Summer 2015. Snyder has said that it was in the summer of 2015 that he first heard reports from staff that outside parties were testing for lead in Flint's water, and that his staff had met with citizens who had raised concerns about the possibility that lead was getting in the water in Flint. July 7th. Brad Werfel is contacted by an ACLU reporter who has a copy of an internal EPA memo outlining concerns of systemic lead contamination in Flint. Werfel declines to comment. Six days later, Werfel tells Michigan Radio, anyone who is concerned about lead in the drinking water in Flint can relax. July 22nd. Much more in Hollands meet with concerned Flint residents who say 80 water tests show high lead levels. Much more sends an email to Wyant and Lyon, saying Flint residents are concerned about lead in their water and asks Wyant and Lyon to personally take a look at this. August 27th, Virginia Tech professor Mark Edwards starts posting results online showing high lead levels in Flint water. In response, Brad Werfel says, Flint drinking water meets state and federal safe drinking water standards. September 3rd, Saxton emails much more and two others, James Redford and Workman, a description of the cost to reconnect to Detroit water and ends by saying, I assume slash hope no one is still seriously considering that option. September 8th, Brad Werfel tells Flint Journal reporter that Edwards could be seen as fanning political flames irresponsibly. Residents of Flint concerned about the health of their community don't need more of that. September 24th, after pediatrician Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha announces elevated lead levels in Flint children, Murray issues a public statement saying that changing the water source would not address the water issues in Flint. October 1st, 
This is the date Snyder has said he first received confirmation from our experts that there was a problem with lead in water. January 13, 2016. Snyder announces at a press conference a potential connection between a deadly outbreak of Legionnaire's disease and Flint water, dating back to 2014. The governor says he was only made aware of the issue a few days before the announcement. January 15th. During a taping of the public television program Off the Record, much more says he didn't learn about the outbreak of Legionnaire's disease and the potential connection to the Flint River until after Snyder did. Snyder has apologized repeatedly for the crisis, and he has vowed to fix Flint. Yet it's never been fully explained how crucial information didn't reach the governor, and why the Snyder administration allowed the people of Flint to use undrinkable water for so long.